Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. So white wasn't super open last draft, let's see if it is this time around. Well, we opened one of my favorite commons in Angel of the Dawn. Sargon's Unsealing is cute, but rarely works out. Gallant Cavalry, also a nice one we could hope to wheel. Dwindle's good removal, Electrify. I'll just take Angel. Uh, Bugler's nice too. I think I prefer Stag. Yeah, I'll go with the Stag. White's already drying up. Could speculate on Engineer in case we end up blue-white with a couple artifacts. Don't want to count too much on the artifact synergy since there's only so many we can get. There's also Dwindle as removal. Not at its best in a white aggro deck since they still get a blocker out of it. But it only blocks once. Could take Minotaur. If we go red-white, Dragon. So there's a couple options. I think Engineer has the highest upside if it does pan out that we're in the blue-white with a couple artifacts sprinkled in, although probably the least likely to make the final cuts. But I don't think I'm missing out on too much here. So we've got a Divination in blue, Disperse, and then Reclamation Sage, Gravedigger. Gravedigger's tempting. Divination's like just okay. If we're trying to draft an aggressive deck, Reclamation Sage can, you know, randomly be a blowout. Sometimes it's just, just a 3 mana 2 1. You would always main deck it, but I think Gravedigger gets the nod. And there's two more artifact payoff cards with Scholar and Artificer. But yeah, once again, the problem is getting enough artifacts out of a single. M19 pack. Skyscanner is also in some of the other core sets, but there's not that many artifacts you naturally want in your aggressive decks. Drillmaster, however, is pretty good. 2-1. That gets a nice bonus, so can still enable attacks in the late game if you top deck it, whereas other two drops usually don't do much. Um, there's no black cards here. Devils is good reds. Yeah, we'll take a Drillmaster. And I'll probably take another one. Marauder's Axe is one of those few artifacts that you could see running in a, a white weenie type deck. But don't see reason to take it over Drillmaster right now. Skelter Archer is also fine if we were to end up black-white. Doesn't look like a Salvager of Secrets deck. Wow, seventh big stag. So that gives me a lot of hope that uh, we'll get a good white deck this time. And then 8th pick. Blue Rat seems open. Maybe go with a two-headed zombie in case black pans out. Usually don't really want Motivator or Elemental even if we end up red. So second color still up for grabs, but white seems to be quite open. We wield both Dragon Egg and Minotaur. You know, Dragon Egg's fine. Um, sometimes you do want a sacrifice effect to get the token, but the token's very good. And then there's Minotaur, so Egg is at its best in like red-black sacrifice. Uh, Minotaur could be fine in just any red beatdown deck. And then there's Child of Night, which I could also take as a two-drop in black-white. It is quite synergistic with both Drillmaster and, Caval and uh, Starcrown stack, since we can keep attacking with our creatures that way and uh, gain some life in a racing situation. Macab Waltz is okay, although we already have a Gravedigger. Don't really need Supplier. We're not drafting a Reanimator deck. Uh, Box Stomper's pretty bad. I'll take a Waltz. Still kind of looking at the Disperse in case we end up blue. Since even though we have a couple good black cards, I'm still not locked into black by any means. But probably want to play white. I'll take a Minotaur. Don't really need Pack Beast even in white. Line Breaker is fine filler if we need it. 
and a Havoc Devil's 13th pick. All right, so, you know, we could be red-white, we could be black-white, we'll see. All right, I mean, Regisaur beats down pretty hard, so don't mind that one. There's no white card I want. I mean, I guess Sentry's playable, it's an upgrade over the Line Breaker. But I think Regisaur's, you know, enough better that it's probably worth taking. Can be incredibly awkward if the opponent has an enchantment-based removal spell like Luminous Bonds or the uh, the blue one we just saw in M19. But if it doesn't get answered right away, it definitely takes over the game quickly. And then there's some other black cards we can hope to wheel: Vampire, Blood Burglar, even the Vulture and Cutthroats. Probably not going to do the Kethys thing. We're seeing reducing reds, couple good blue cards. Also, I don't mind a loyal Pegasus. The Necromancer is also actually pretty decent. 3-3 three, three, that makes it 2-2 zombie, so it helps us go wide if we end up with a Inspire charge. Pegasus needs a lot of cheap creatures to go with it, but we've got a couple twos already. Yeah, I think I'm leaning... Pegasus, and then Necromancer, Captain could be nice ones to wheel. Well, we're seeing a lot of blue in this direction. Boreal Elemental, Warden, which does make sense since we didn't see a ton of blue in pack one. But um, yeah, no real great white cards, cutthroats, you know, marginal. We're not going to have a ton of bows to synergize with it like we had in M20. So I could still take it and, you know, attack into bigger creatures with our smaller stuff and then cutthroat to trade. Sentinel just feels a bit weak and I don't think I'm jumping into blue. We're pretty committed to black-white now. There's some good cards, Protector and Dawning Angel, even a Blood-Soaked Altar, which can be a nice late-game win condition. I think I'm leaning a bit more aggressive than Blood-Soaked Altar, though. So I'm kind of lacking Griffin. I do have a lot of 4-drops already, so maybe Dawning Angel's better. Sure, we'll take the 5. And then now there's a, eh, I guess, a bow which synergizes with Cutthroat. Blade Brand could be decent as a comma trick. And a Sentinel. Sentinel's not the worst with Pegasus and Drillmaster. Fills out the curve, just doesn't hit very hard. Do I need Blade Brand? Blade Brand's okay. It is quite nice with like a menace creature, for instance, if they try and double block. Yeah, I'll take the blade brand. We might wield the sentinel anyway. The funny thing about foot soldier is that with only one pack, it's usually not very good. Although I have seen drafts where you can still get two or three in a single pack just because people ignore it and it goes late. Skeleton would be nice to go with the Blade Brand and kind of the more grindy plan, but we're looking to beat down. Legion's End is kind of narrow. So I think I just take the Griffin now. Keep taking those evasive creatures and then Blood Burglar versus Aerial Assaults. Do have a decent number of flyers, so Aerial Assault could be fine if we're racing. I also want more 2-drops, and this is a pretty good one. Apicure could be okay, we've got a bit of life gain synergy. Inspiring Captain is also fine, but again, the 4-drops are pretty crowded already. I guess I'll take the Apicure, but I'm probably not playing it. All 
point, we wield Sentry and Vulture. So do I want the 3-2 Vigilance that dies and gets a counter, or the 2-2 Flyer? Kind of leaning Sentry. Since we have a bit of Graveyard Recursion with Gravedigger and Waltz, so we don't mind trading off creatures and getting value. Alright, so we're definitely settling into black-white nicely. I wield a bow, guess I'll take it, but don't think I'm playing it. Right, there's a sentinel. Alright, let's hope to get some more good aggressive cards in the last pack. Still didn't pick up any inspired charges, so that's unfortunate. But I think we found the right color combination at least. Well, well, well. We meet again, old friend. Well, this is my first time opening Ugin. This is not really the deck for it, but it is 8 mana win the game. I guess I'll take it. Such wise words. Devotee, how many zombies? Oh, got a couple. It's not too difficult to amass an army. Swift response would also be nice. Don't mind Chorister. Skeleton Archer. There's a couple good cards for sure, but I do have a bit of a gap at three. So the devotee fits in nicely. Ghost Light's a nice one, probably just go with a land. Ascension can be interesting. Don't think this is a deck for it, don't have a ton of token makers. Probably need to cut some of the four drops, Cutthroat's probably one that goes. Now that we open Ugin, we have an alternate win condition in case the aggressive plan doesn't work out. Uh, Crypt Lurker. Only discards creatures and not planeswalkers. Uh, is this a battlement deck? Not really. Sure, we'll take a battlement. Don't think I need another four drop. Alright, nice. Finishing blow, a bit of removal. That way we can play a long game where we eventually resolve Ugin. Seems good. Couple other potential playables, but. Ooh, Pansaris Acolyte's nice. I'll take that one. Probably replaces... Hmm, what does it replace at four? I mean, there's nothing else I want. Secure the scene's pretty bad. Another Acolyte, oh no, too many good four drops. Alright, two added zombies gone, even though it synergizes with the Devotee. Do I want a Swindler just to have an extra two drop? Maybe I do. But this is just too good to pass up. Another finishing blow. I mean, black white is definitely flowing in this direction. <laughs> Nine lives, so I can lose the game with my Ugin minus three. And don't think we're playing this one. Also doesn't seem like a Defined Strike deck anymore. Upgrade over Line Breaker. Um, not as many Good two drops as I would have liked. Could have maybe taken Swindler over Acolyte. So it might not be the best Loyal Pegasus deck. But we've got a nice mid to late game here. Sentinel also works nicely with Basri's Acolyte. Alright, might actually play the Blackguard 
just to fill out the curve. How do we build this? How much does Ugin affect the rest of our build? Not too much, I would say. We don't have any card draw, so we're not guaranteed to see it every game. So still want to be able to win without it. This is 41 cards, 17 lands. Blackguard, I think, makes the cuts. Just want a lot of cheap creatures to make sure we can get value from our Acolyte. Gravedigger looks good. Could see cutting Macabre Waltz, Bladebrand maybe. I like the Angels. And then... Yeah, Register is not really a combo with Ugin, I guess. That's okay though. I think I like keeping Pegasus, just have a bit more evasion. Even though sometimes it's not going to be able to attack. We do have a couple other flyers. Pegasus, Sentinel, Protector, two Angels at five, and then Stag usually enables good attacks. So we should be able to use the Pegasus to good effect. So between, I think, Waltz and Bladebrand. And it looks like we're keeping the Bladebrand and cutting the Waltz. And then we still have a Gravedigger. Yeah, probably want an extra planes since we have double white on Acolytes. So 9, 7. Looks good. Who goes in the picture? Ugin, I guess. Bit of a slow draw, but still keeping. No three drops, sadly. So it's going to be Stag as our first play. Probably Dawning Angel into Angel of the Dawn. Lots of Dawn happening here. Well, we've got seven out of eight lands needed to cast Ugin. Yeah, I mean, they probably have a cutthroat here. Or Skeleton Archer. We just gotta try and survive. And then I could consider trading here for the Archer. So we're definitely on the I hope we draw Ugin plan since the aggro plan's probably not gonna work out. So they've got some life gain synergy in there. Uh oh, that's a lot of lands. I feel like I'm going to be saying the words Ugin a lot in this draft. If I top deck Ugin, <laughs> then I might want to consider chumping. Otherwise I'm taking 6 down to 7. If I draw a different creature, they get back their ghoul end of turn. I could trade for the ghoul. Yeah, I think we're already at the point where it's pretty much top deck Ugin or bust. I'm 
maybe if we draw final blue I can still kill Apicure and it would have been better to wait to trade for the 3-1. Alright, definitely need to draw Ugin now. <laughs> Easy minus 5. Be kind to a stop deck. Ah, oh, it would have been epic though. Gotta admit that. Are we dead on board? Maybe not quite yet. Yep. 11. So I can jump 5. Probably better than trading. <laughs> uh, now they can still sacrifice a silver smote ghoul, but all right. So let me double check. This is five mana. All right. Now we gotta beat an opponent with four cards in hand. We even shum blocked as soon as we had the chance. I don't think we could have saved ourselves more damage. All right, all right. Let's see if we can win a game a normal way. Yeah, we did keep a pretty slow hand. Just needed to draw Ugin one turn sooner. Do I want a Regisaur here? If my opponent has a Dwindle, we're going to be incredibly sad. But I think I go for it. I mean, you can still make the case that Regisaur is a fine card to play as kind of your last card, since it's 3 mana 7 6, so you're essentially getting a discount on the mana cost for the stance as opposed to running it out turn 3. A wall of mist. Alright, at least we can attack into it. Goodbye. Maybe Drillmaster? And then I can go Devotee Tapland and maybe still play a 5. We'll see. Ooh, Acolyte. Alright, that works out, so... I get to smash... I guess I'll play this first. And then next turn play Acolytes after discarding Swamp. Registrar is indeed a zombie, which is why I played this first. And we've got a couple mana sinks between Devotee and Blackguard. Alright, Village Rights is pretty good here. Our opponent keeps jumping, we keep making zombies. 3 2. And we're officially empty handed. Opponent will gain for life next turn potentially. A 
Could have considered not attacking with the Blank Art this turn. But getting a damage in is also pretty nice. Worst case scenario, they can answer Regisaur. And then we only have a Devotee and Acolyte left. Alright, that's okay. So we're chomping. The Bone Splinters. Demonic Embrace. Fair enough. So they have to block uh, Regisaur still. So yeah, I guess we can send everyone. The one extra power being incredibly relevant. <laughs> and we get to make a zombie. Such great synergy between Devotee and Regisar, all things considered. Horizon Scholar is not going to be good enough. Turn 3, Rotting Regisar goes the distance. No Regisaur, no Ugin. Let's see how we do. I'll take the one. Alright, game plan acquired. Survive until Ugin. Now we don't have a ton of lanes, so that's our primary concern right now. I'll take that trade. Uh-oh. Neonate can drain me without attacking. Uh, land is good. And then we can cast our Grave Digger, which will buy us more time. Yeah, that's probably gonna die. Should I kill it now? It's basically giving them an extra damage with the neonate if that's their plan next turn. Sure, I mean, I'm definitely gonna kill it eventually. But Gravedigger doesn't do much for me right now. Could get a little aggressive here with the Protector. I actively want him to kill my sentry so we can Gravedigger back sentry. Bladebrand would be bad if I block Arsonists. I think I trade, otherwise next turn I don't have any plays. That's okay. Land is good. Get back our bird. Well, two more lands. One more land. We're getting there.
Well, we drew four lands in a row. All according to plan. Yep. Sure. Maybe the Gravedigger attack's not needed given Ugin, but we can also just start plussing instead of having two minus two here. Folly Veteran, I see. So they were playing a Goblin Tribal deck. Probably just plus on the Veteran, stay back. Don't really want to minus four and lose Ugin to a burn spell. Now there are answers to Planeswalkers. Finishing Blow, we've got two of those in the deck. Here's a five mana answer for Ugin. So hopefully they don't have that one. Ugin evens the score with Rotting Regisaur. Fine hands, we've got the double white for Acolyte already. Any fourth land lets us deploy most of it. Opponent red whites. So the life gains should be quite useful. Yep, that's fine by me. I think we wait on Battalion. Ooh, Regisaur. Could double spell here? I think we wait on Regisaur. This turn Drill Mastered Acolyte play a Loyal Pegasus. So we can grow Battalion. Probably still trades for Devil, but it's okay. Interesting. Mm hmm. Yeah, that was kind of a blowout. Not gonna lie. The one time make a stance better than inspire charge. And just a trade. And we'll get back Acolytes. This is the type of hand where Regisaur is probably going to be my last play. So Acolyte pumps these two, can attack all. Or I can finishing blow Devils, send Gravedigger Pegasus. Eh, yeah, Acolyte's fine. Yep, 
And if we get another trick up. Let's see what happens. I guess like Inspire Charge would be bad for me. So I could not send all three and just send Pegasus and one of them. Ooh, Luminous Bones would have been painful on Regisaur. Alright, now I think we finishing blow attack. And then next turn I can double spell. Right, outrage means no attacks. But opponent's almost empty handed here, and we still have some goodies. Ooh, what is this? Well, it's pretty good against Regisaur. So I guess we just take to the skies and play Angel of the Dawn. They've got the anti Ugin tech. Turns out we have Regisaur instead. So hopefully we get to smack them for five. So this doesn't matter. I mean, it's pretty good against Regisaur, to be fair. They've got all the anti-Regisaur cards. They've got anti-Ugin and anti-Regisaur. Why not attack last turn? Because Loyal Pegasus needs a friend. He's too scared to go alone. And aren't we all? Turn 3 Regisaur, a little awkward with finishing blow. But we'll see, I mean it's still a keep but I'm not sure yet if I'm playing Reggie on three. All right, so can just play Devotee on three instead of Regisaur, we'll see. And for opponents like Red Green, Regisaur becomes much more tempting to run out since they're less likely to have good answers for it. Blue and white and black are the ones that are more likely to have annoying answers and yeah like blue having a bounce spell after we have to discard for instance would be kind of annoying. So we'll hit for two and I think just run out battalion. Yeah, next turn Griffin. Think we'd be patient. Haha. <laughs> So I can still attack with three creatures to get a counter on it, to eventually get it large enough. Silverback. Find removal targets. And then next turn we can double spell. So 
So now I want to attack with all. Are we going to deal damage with makeshift battalions this game? Who knows? Meteorites kills Blackguard. Another finishing blow. Well, I can still cast it in my upkeep. Just gotta make sure to put some stops. If I draw a land, I can even trigger my devotee end of turn, which would be the cherry on top here. Destroy Planeswalker? Anyone? They're probably gonna minus on Regisaur, which is fine. That one, sadly, is going to go away. Do we feel comfortable attacking into this Wind Mage? I don't think so. I'll just wait. Yeah, they've got something up their sleeve. Unexpected, but effective. I like how it's still an 8-6, despite our Lord being gone. Register doesn't know what happens. Drillmaster. So they don't have any good block on Reggie. And then those battalion attack. It's probably fine. So next turn they're gonna try and block Regisaur and deal for damage to it. Battalion never got a chance to deal damage. Seems keepable. They've got the anti regisaur tech. If the Apostle attacks, probably take it. Sure. Want to wait on Acolyte, so between Griffin and Stag. I think we Stag, since they might have more removal. And I think Griffin's going to be more important to stem the bleeding. Golos, I see.
think we protect her before Acolytes. Uh oh, opponent's gonna actually get to activate goals this game. Wow. That's rough. Still okay trading for sprites. I think. Or I can wait until next turn when I play Devotee so we at least get a trigger. Yeah, this is probably game over. Need to find Ugin, I guess. Any chance I can race? Seems unlikely. I'm getting two triggers from Protector though and the Drillmaster. I'm staying back. It's just gonna lose two goals. They can fly Golos next turn, hit me for three, six, seven, eight, so we'll just be dead on board. Just have to try and trade for Corsair, I guess. I think we're dead on board now, or pretty much. And we still need land plus Ugin, so we're not gonna top deck our way out of this. Pretty slow hands, but we're halfway there. Uh oh, a one drop. At least it doesn't hit very hard. Alright. Plus 
play the stag. Wow, ambusher. That's rough. Well, probably still need to play Angel, and then we can maybe start holding stuff back to play post Ugin. Yeah, I mean, I probably need to trade here. Bad thing is our opponent's just, you know, holding all their cards so they're not playing into the board sweeping effects. Maybe they're missing a color, who knows. Although Ambusher's the perfect card to be color screwed with. I mean, I could just try and race, I guess. Make them use removal, maybe. Alright, so next turn I can cast Ugin minus four, which would wipe their entire board. So just go to holds. I get to keep both my angels. No. Colossal Dreadmaw, how could you? I mean, I guess I'll minus six now. And get rid of the Dreadmaw. And then I'll, I'll attack here to get in three. Yeah, I mean, minus four is tempting, but... Then I'll have an Ugin at three loyalty. I could technically double block Dreadmo if they don't have anything. Although they haven't had a great reason to use like a Rabbit Bite yet. And then I would lose an Angel and my Ugin. Whereas now I can have a clear board with Stag and Protector. That seems better to me. Because Dreadmo tramples too, so could easily trample over Ugin. So yeah, I think minus six is the way to go. Let's see if we can stabilize from here. Oh no, another Dreadmaw. Well, Dreadmaw is probably going after Ugin, which we can let go. And then Drillmaster can get in a bunch of damage. And then probably just send both, put them to two. And hope for the best.
Eh, looks like the Griffin can get across the finish line here. Well, Ugin didn't, you know, entirely win that game by himself, but definitely uh, helped us come back from behind. And this hand's fine. I'm happy ambushing the Ember Cat, I think. Ouch, another bone to ash. I'll go with the griffin. So Acolyte kind of wants me to keep some of my creatures around. But I could trade Stag for Fire Elemental here. Although a 4-4 Stag will trade for a 2. But taking 10 is a lot. It's kind of sketchy. Gravedigger's not bad. I think we still get this out there first. Gravedigger back Acolyte, I think. Still don't really want to race. Uh-oh. Yeah, they've got a nice looking deck. Oh. 
And then we can try and trade with the blade brains. Ouch. Ugin would be a nice top deck here. That's probably game over. <laughs> oh, Ugin. If the opponent has a counter spell, we're gonna be incredibly sad. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll attack with the Drill Master, minus five. Just to land. Can Ugin save us at five life? That's awkward. That's good. Also go to Planeswalkers, goes to our face. My flames burned beyond perception. They might be sandbagging some creatures to try and play multiples in the same turn. But then we can minus. Angel of the Dawn. So we can ultimate Ugin. 15 cards remain. I think we gotta go for it. Should have some spells left. Oh yeah, there's Regisaur. Looks good. Phone of Pegasus. And we're at eights. Feel a bit safer now. And her opponent explodes. Wow, I cannot believe it. Well, this is probably the most epic game to reach Mythic you've ever seen. Someone proved me wrong. I mean, clearly we won this game thanks to Loyal Pegasus. I don't see Ugin on the battlefield. Well, not a bad rank. I would qualify us for the top 1200, but we've got a game left to play. What's the worst that can happen? Are we gonna lose 900 rank with one loss? So what's the, what's the current ranking 
Ugin 3, Regisaur 2, Pegasus 2. Is that fair? <laughs> Alright, let's go. Only two lanes, but you know, we've got some plays we can trade. Hopefully works out. So next turn I could drill master, so blackguard attacks, or just play sentinel. Uh oh, mill, our only weakness. Yeah. Are we attacking with omen speaker? We are not. I mean, we do have a stag on four, so I think drill master is still okay. Yeah, they could definitely mill a sound before we get to eight lanes. That can also draw. Go, go, stag. You need to save us. Registrar gone. Yeah, Regisaur is eliminated from contention now. I guess we do have a Grave Digger, that's true. <laughs> Reggie was robbed. All the Reggie fans in tears. Uh oh. Draw 3, mill 6. Don't think this is gonna end well first chant. I guess her opponent's at 7. One can dream. Paralysis on the stag. Is it just angel pass? Or do we send all? If they have any interaction... We do get punished pretty badly for attacking. So let's see if this resolves. It does. I think we wait a turn. If they have Disperse or Unsummon. I think this attack is just too awful. Still have 13 cards. Anticipate at least doesn't trigger corrosion. Alright, I think we go for it now. That's lethal, so no need to pump just yet. Would have also killed Ugin, by the way.
Alright, Lance would give me Ugin for the finishing 3 damage. Enthralling Hold steals Angel. There's a Lance. Let's not get too excited just yet. Might want to move to combat with Sentinel first. And see what happens. Denial. Ouch. No good attacks. They control the flyer, so it was unless we paid for. And the Child of Night is too late to the party. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So close yet so far away. Good game opponents. Well, we definitely had some drama in our games today. And we can't complain with a 6 and 3 here. Ugin definitely won us some games. So did Regisaur. But in the end, it was Psychic Corrosion that was a real winner. Let's crack some packs. Palladia Moors, the Ruiner. Pretty cool card. Although, once again, Green Seeker and Re Reinforcements, probably the two most busted uncommons in M19 draft, paired next to each other. Dark Dweller Oracle. Almost have a playset now, I think. Amulet of Safekeeping. Not great for limited. Ooh, Chromium the Mutable. Another Elder Dragon here. Yeah, that card's definitely worth building around and draft. Maybe use a Meteorite for ramp and fixing. And a wild card. Well, that was one epic draft. Didn't quite get to finish the way we would have liked, but I'll still take it any day of the week. So, hope you enjoyed that one. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.